Now, after getting a little bit of flavor of what a linear inequality sort of involves in context as well as in mathematical notation and representation, uh, we'll kind of formally go about mathematically examining linear inequalities. So what we're going to start with here with these first several examples is looking at examples of inequalities that are linear in nature, so having a, a line sort of relationship. But we're just restricting ourselves to having just one variable involved for right now. So you can see that both of these examples only have one variable. So now I've happened to pick y for the first one and then x for the other one. Um, you kind of see how that plays out. So if you have any sort of a relationship, it doesn't matter if it's an inequality or an equals, whatever it might be, and it just has one variable, right? There's only y. There's not a z or a h or any other variable. It's just a y. Then you can represent that in exactly one dimension when there's one variable. And so in one dimension, that would be like a line that you're seeing right here. So if this number line is the y number line, then to represent these numbers right here, it's going to be all the numbers that are greater than negative 2, which you'd want to use an open circle for, right? And then you can have the arrow to go all the numbers to the right of that, since those are all the numbers, right? So these are the numbers that all that y can be, all the numbers that y can um, take on as a value. Now, if you can represent it in one dimension, you can represent it in any other dimensions higher than that. You can go lower, but you can go higher than that. So if I wanted to represent y is greater than negative 2 in, say, two dimensions you can and this is often how we represent two dimensions so you have to just kind of think think like y equals negative two and that just turns out to be a line which of course is just a horizontal line it ends up being this line right here to draw that the best that would be y equals negative two but really what we're trying to graph though is y is greater than negative two and so because we don't want y to actually be negative 2, we use what's um, called the dashed line, or if you wanted to dot it, whatever it might be, just don't make it solid. And then if we want y to be greater than negative 2, it ends up having to be all of these ordered pairs right here are going to satisfy this relationship that I shade in right here. And the reason why this makes sense is because any of the ordered pairs in that shaded region, so like this point right here, is um, 4, 0, then if you plugged in 4 for x and 0 for y into that relationship, it should make it a true number statement. Now, plugging 4 for x, there's not really an x to plug into, but the 0 can go in because that was the y value, and then you get 0 is greater than negative 2, and, two, and that's a true number statement, right? So for any of the ordered pairs in that region, y is always greater than negative 2, um, down here, all of your y values are actually less than negative 2, so hence we don't have that shaded. So um, that's how we would go about graphing that linear inequality in two dimensions then. Um, with this fella right here, um, if we're to represent this, notice that we don't have the x isolated, so we're going to have to actually solve for the, well, we do, but it has a negative 1, is kind of what I mean. We want a positive 1, so you'd want to like multiply both sides by negative 1, or you could divide, but because this is an inequality, right, whenever you multiply or divide both sides by a negative, you're going to have to flip the symbol. So we end up getting from that then that negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3, flip the symbol, because we multiplied by the negative, is greater than or equal to x, which is the same as x is less than or equal to 3, of course. So then to graph this in one dimension, it would have to be a solid dot, and then it's going to be all the numbers that go below, right? So you can graph this also in two dimensions, even when you've got one variable. You just kind of need to think like x equals 3, um, which would be a vertical line. Now we can make this one solid because if we're trying to graph x is equal to 3 or less, then you can include the numbers where x is 3. And then to be below would be to be to the left if we're thinking vertically. So all of these ordered pairs right here should satisfy the relationship, and we can check that just by picking out some random pairs. So like right here, this point is in the um, graph of the region we just colored in. That point is 3, negative 6, and when you plug in 3 for x and negative 6 for y, note the negative 6 doesn't go anywhere because there is no y, but at least when you plug in the 3, 
then you get 3 is less than or equal to 3, which is a true number statement. And you can pick that for other things, like negative 5, 0 is in the shaded region. When you plugged in negative 5 there now instead, negative 5 is indeed less. So we know we've properly shaded that. Okay, so let's move to when we're dealing with an inequality. Um, two examples here, but in both of these now, there are two variables involved, right? So when there's two variables involved, you can't put this on a single number line. You have to have this in two dimensions or more to represent this. So if I were to graph this right here, it's basically kind of linear in nature. So the easiest way would be to get this into mx plus b form. So if we were to solve this, you could first subtract um, 5x on both sides so that we get closer to getting y alone because you're subtracting the symbol does not have to flip so we end up getting from that then that 3y is greater than or equal to negative 5x and then from there you can divide by 3 that's dividing by a positive so you do not need to flip the symbol and then you end up getting the following that y is greater than or equal to negative 5 thirds x Great, so this is just like graphing the line that has a y-intercept at zero and then a slope of negative five-thirds, which will go like this. So note that because the inequality symbol had an equal to, you can make this line solid. And then um, when the y value is above the negative five-thirds x, um, you want to shade above the line. So you have to think, does side 1 or side 2, is that going to be above the line? And um, it should be pretty clear in this example that above the line is going to be in this region right here. Now, if you wanted to make sure that you've actually shaded the correct side, you can choose a test point on both sides of the line. So if you wanted to test, let's say, this point right here, negative 2, negative 3, then you could plug that in, and then you could plug in a point on this side of the line, say 4, 1, and whichever one satisfies will tell you which side of the line is the correct one. So like if you, if you chose this one, you could put in your y greater than or equal to negative 5 thirds times negative 2, negative 3 is greater than or equal to 10 thirds, well obviously that's not true. So that tells you that that's not going to work. But this point should work that if this is your y, and then negative 5 thirds times 4, you end up getting y is greater than or equal to negative 20 thirds, and of course that is true. So you know that that test point works, so it just tells you that you've then chosen the correct side to kind of have shaded right there. So really just having that solid line and the shading there, that's going to give you the solution set that's going to graph that particular inequality. Um, and then for the other example right here, um, let's solve it for y. So let's subtract one third x on both sides. That does not flip the inequality symbol because we're subtracting. We end up getting that. And then we'll have to multiply or divide by negative one on both sides. That will flip the inequality symbol. So we're going to end up with y is less than positive one third x minus two. That right there we'll want to graph. So it's got a y-intercept at negative two and then a positive slope of one third. Now because that right there is just a less than, you can just leave your line dotted like I have. If you want to just do it like that, or if you dashed it, that's fine, but definitely don't have it solid. And then because it is less than, the y is less than the uh, other quantity, you'd want to shade below, which does end up being this region below right here that you could then shade in. Again, like I did with the previous example, you could pick some test points if you wanted, um, like pick a point somewhere up there and then pick an XY point somewhere down here and plug in the X and the Y and, and test, but it does turn out to be exactly as I um, made the dotted line and shaded below there.